All right, everybody, uh, cleaning and lubricating the AR-15. All right, we have the AR-15. Um, it's been safety checked. There are uh, no magazines, obviously. Chamber is empty. First things first, I want to go over with some of the products, or basically all the products that I'm going to be using. Um, we'll start off with the cleaning agent. Um, big fan of Hops Number no. Nine. Um, I don't believe Hops Number no. Nine has anything that can spray in to any areas, so I bought um, a little spray bottle, filled it with Hops Number no. Nine. Um, for lubrication and protection against corrosion, we have Corrosion X, very, very good stuff. For the exterior of the gun, some people don't um, lube or, or spray the exterior of the gun. I decided that REM oil, which is not very good for the internal parts of the gun, it's too thin. Um, I reckon that it's pretty good, at least for the outside parts of the gun. Um, so we'll, I'll use that for the outside. Um, nylon brush, I'm a big fan of nylon brushes. We have a uh, copper wire brush, which will be used only for the bolt carrier group because that needs a little bit of scrubbing. Um, other tools that we have is a pick, which can be used to take out uh, the firing pin, retaining pin, and the bolt carrier group, which we'll get to later. Uh, a needle nose plier that I like to use. I basically like to get some of these uh, patches that are with solvent and you know crimp it in there and kind of mop like the uh, the upper receiver. Um, we have uh, patches also for the 5.56 and 223 chambered barrels. As you can see, they're much smaller, so they can fit down the barrel. And um, also <clears throat> a uh, bore brush. Obviously, you build this together to make it long enough to go through the barrel. And I end it with a uh, nylon uh, bore brush. I'm a big fan of the nylon brushes. I, I really don't like the idea of putting copper uh, brushes or bristles down the barrel, so I'm a big fan of, of these nylon uh, brushes. And uh, just some shop towels that can be used to either put some cleaned, already cleaned product in there or uh, even to, to dry out the, uh, the upper receiver and, and um, the lower sections of the gun for like large jobs. And of course anything that you uh, spill, you know, you can mop up. And um, all right, so what we'll do is we'll get into the disassembly and, uh, and then on to the cleaning. <clears throat> okay, so uh, disassembly. Uh, for those of you not familiar, uh, let's see, we'll just ram this forward real quick. All right. The beginning of the disassembly process is with uh, the two pins. These are called the takedown pins. And uh, sometimes if the gun is <clears throat> pretty old, you can kind of force them out with your fingers. Uh, but this one is pretty new and it's still pretty tight. So you can get any, anything that's small enough. We'll use the end of this uh, bore brush and just push down. And they should come out pretty easy. You can hear it actually smacking the steel on the other side. And then push it down. And then what you'll see is when we rotate it, you'll see that they're sticking out on the other end. Now they do need to pull out um, a little bit more. Now don't worry about the pins falling out because there's a retention um, pin that's inside there that will stop these from like falling all of the way out. So what we'll do is we'll, I think that's already done. Let me just push it down. All right, so it should be able to break apart. All right, so there it is. So we're breaking it apart and uh, there it is to it. Now, first thing I want to mention is we're going to segregate the pieces so that everything is nice and organized. Uh, this part doesn't tend to get very dirty. This is the uh, lower receiver as well as the adjustable stock. So put that off to the side. However, before we do that, just to prevent any kind of damage if, if it ever falls on the ground or anything like that, um, I encourage people to put their pins back in because obviously if they're sticking out, um, even though they're pretty tough, who knows, something may happen and you may bend them. So just snap them back in and uh, just put it off to the side. <clears throat> So now we'll focus on the upper receiver. This requires a little bit more manipulation. Um, here is the bolt carrier group. This is the dirtiest part of the gun, just, just by nature. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is go to your um, charging handle and depress the trigger because it's, it's in that little groove right there because otherwise it won't come out. So depress the trigger and then begin to pull back and it'll take the bolt out with it. So the charging handle and the bolt carrier group work hand in hand. So as you can see, we'll take it out. We'll just set it down and then take out the charging handle. And then as for the upper receiver, um, that's how it looks like after the bolt carrier group is out. And uh, we can now just put this down off to the side. 
In addition to the assembly process, it gets a little bit more detailed because the bolt carrier group itself is made of about three to four um, individual parts that can be manipulated and taken out. So first things first is we'll start with the firing, firing pin retainer pin. And this is what you use your um, pick for. I'm not sure, can you see it pretty good? Just get in there and just, uh, as you can see, pull it out. <clears throat> so you get your firing pin, retainer pin, put that down. Now the firing pin, now that that firing pin retainer pin is out, the firing pin itself should just fall out. And there it is. So this is what actually strikes the back of the bullet, which of course makes the bullet fire. As you can see here, the, um, the bolt itself can move back and forth. And uh, that's part of the operating process of the gun. This is the cam pin, which helps in the operation of the, uh, of the bolt. Now normally it's actually turned, usually like, like that. It's turned 90 degrees and it rotates back and forth like that. In order for this to come disassembled, you want to push back the bolt and then turn the cam pin 90 degrees so that it's it's in line with basically the direction of the bolt. And then we'll get the needle nose plier and just oops, sorry about that. And we'll just take it out. And that's actually where the firing pin went through, is that hole right there. So we'll put that down. And now that that's been taken out, we'll take out the actual bolt. This is the dirtiest part of the gun, at least in my opinion. You can see a little bit of carbon buildup right there. Um, in the previous video that we, that we did, we only fired about 20 rounds, so this gun is not very dirty. Um, but still, the, the methodology in cleaning is all the same. So, to summarize, we'll basically have uh, three, three groups to clean. So I'll just put this as such, and we'll line it up. Let me just take this out of the way. So basically you'll have, basically you'll have your upper receiver. Um, the dirtiest part of this will definitely be the barrel. And uh, you'll also have to clean the inside there of the upper receiver um, as well as the chamber which of course leads to uh, the barrel so that's uh, part one that we'll clean the second part that we'll focus of course is uh, basically the guts of the gun which will be the bolt carrier group uh, so this is the bolt this is the bolt carrier group uh, we have the firing pin it might be magnetized firing pin uh, firing pin retainer pin cam pin charging handle and then the very last thing that we'll clean is um, basically the lower receiver and um, the stock assembly and uh, right so we'll hop into the cleaning section shortly alright everybody so now we're on the cleaning section of the video and uh, we'll start with the uh, upper receiver and the barrel of the gun first I'm a big fan of uh, soaking and doing like a little preliminary soak so we'll go ahead and do that now I'm gonna be using my uh, spray bottle I have it kind of uh, shooting down as a stream so we'll shoot down the barrel it's a little bit messy but that's alright and uh, we'll just shoot down the upper receiver as well. So let me see if I can get a more finer spray. This might be a little bit too much, but again, I'm trying to shoot it down the barrel. So I'll let it run down the barrel. Don't worry if it soaks, that's fine. And then while, while this is all marinating, I guess you could say in the hops number nine, we'll start um, squirting on the, um, the bolt carrier group because that also has quite a bit of dirt on it. So I have it just basically on top of a, um, a shop rag and I'm just going to spritz this all down real quick. Make sure you get the uh, bolt carrier, or excuse me, the bolt pretty well because um, that part is arguably the dirtiest. Take off some of the old oil. And basically as you can see I'm just going up and down the uh, the various parts okay now what we'll do is we will go back 
to the upper receiver section and we'll get our uh, bore brush. This is fully assembled <clears throat> so it actually goes down the length of the barrel. Um, if you want, just in case not enough of the uh, solvent got down the barrel, uh, feel free to squirt on the actual brush itself. You don't really want dry on dry contact. Some people use um, basically what they call like a um, it's a bore, it, it basically stabilizes the brush. I forgot what it's called. It's not a bore sight, but it helps to keep from the metal dinging around on the inside of the barrel. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially if the barrel's already uh, lubricated. So just go ahead and start running down the bore brush down the, uh, the barrel. And just uh, pull it out, go back and forth a couple of times. You shouldn't really feel too much resistance, just feel a little bit of a tugging. And basically what this brush is doing is it's just breaking up all of the carbon, which is of course the, uh, the baked on um, spent gunpowder. And I usually go back and forth maybe about six or seven times. Uh, the gun hasn't been used very much, so you don't really need to do too many uh, passes. This will be my last pass. And uh, we will not dry this immediately. Again, we'll let the hops number nine uh, continue to work. So we'll, we'll leave this alone and we'll just uh, move this off a little bit further to the side. And um, we'll start working on the uh, bolt carrier group. Uh, this has been soaking for a while. This is the only section that I think that a, a wire brush should be used. It's because, there, like I said, there's a lot of baked on uh, carbon. So just go ahead and start brushing around the rings. This has already had a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds to, uh, to sit. So just go over. It's basically kind of like brushing your teeth. These are the locking lugs. This is the face of the bolt, so you can uh, make sure to get in there as well. And then at, at the end, what we'll do is we'll actually, uh, in another segment of the video, we'll actually uh, dry this off um, in preparation for the oiling. So um, what I do is I normally put this in a separate pan, so that's been you know pretty cleaned already. And um, then what I like to do is I like to get the nylon brush because, um, again, I don't feel that um, the wire brush is needed for any other segment of the gun except for the bolt, which we just did. And, uh, you know, basically just give it a good, good brush down. Uh, this is obviously the external part of the bolt. And for some of the tighter spots, if you have the brush, this is actually a Springfield Armory's um, XD brush, but of course it can be used for anything. And for the smaller parts of the bolt carry group, like such as where the inside of um, the part where the bolt actually goes in, um, just swab it around so, cause, because carbon actually does get in here. But for the most part, the bolt, the exterior of the bolt actually does not get very dirty. And uh, I'm going very, very fast for the sake of this video because I know people will get bored. Um, so if, you're, if, you're, if your various parts are actually dirtier than this, you know, feel free to take a longer period of time to, to be more detailed and get more of that dirt out. So that's done. Uh, for the most part, you don't even need to use a brush for this, but we will anyways. Uh, actually, if you can see here, there is a small ring of carbon that is around there. You can, is it detailed enough to get that? So, basically, because the hops has been working to break that down, it should be, yeah, it came off pretty easy. And just give this a light brush. Alright, that's done. Uh, this is a really, really small part. This is the uh, cam pin doesn't get too dirty and we'll we'll actually go over this again with one of the uh, with one of the um, patches to get it to get it really clean but we're just taking off the dirt and uh, this is the charging handle and this part doesn't really get that much dirty either just just give it a basic rundown 
and then we'll put that you know over here and then um, as for the lower receiver oh excuse me this is the cam pin is still here sorry about that um, these don't get very dirty either so just again just a quick you know wipe down we'll leave it like that so then we'll get to the uh, lower receiver this part doesn't get very dirty um, at all and instead of using a brush I actually like to use some of these um, the patches instead so we'll just give it a quick spray and then uh, just use the patches to just get in there and uh, just wipe everything down again this is a pretty expedited cleaning um, I'm doing this again for the sake of, of YouTube because if if I did this is how you know how normally how I do it it would take too long and I don't want you guys to get to get bored again if your gun is is uh, dirtier depending on the condition feel free to take longer and uh, clean it so again I don't really use a brush here it's not really necessary virtually no carbon or dirt gets back here in the lower receiver that's one of the beauties of the AR-15 and I'm assuming some other rifles are like that as well so I'm just cleaning the mag well again that part doesn't get you know very dirty and uh, this is this is one of those areas where <clears throat> the um, the needle nose plier comes in um, obviously your fingers might be too big so you can kind of grab the uh, the cotton or the, the patches and you won't you won't ever lose grip and it allows you to get in there and like really get in between those springs on the uh, lower parts kit the trigger group okay And considering this thing is not very dirty in the first place, um, it shouldn't be too hard. And uh, yeah, so that's basically that's basically the cleaning section um, of this video. All right, everybody. So this is the drying section of the video, um, and for the sake of expediting the video, because I know that it can be kind of long, while I was off camera, um, I actually got some shop towels and started drying the upper receiver, which of course um, had quite a bit of solvent in there. So for the most part, the um, upper receiver is is pretty dry, and most of the solvent is gone. And then, uh, basically, in the same stroke, um, I got my bore brush and attached one of the dowels at the end and started running some dry patches through there to start t uh, basically drying the inside of the barrel and as you can see here as we ran more patches through they progressively got lighter in color so that means that more and more of the dirt was being taken out so we'll just do a quick run through um, with some of the smaller <clears throat> patches that I was telling you about and we're just gonna stick them uh, you know in into the uh, upper receiver and just uh, do some more detailed drying and cleaning. One of the areas that you want to focus on um, is actually the uh, chamber, which has a, a star shape to it so that the locking lugs can get in there. So you want to make sure that's pretty clean um, as well as dry. And one of the uh, reasons that I, I put a lot of emphasis on drying the gun as far as taking out the solvent is that um, you're basically going to be putting oil on the metal as well. And if there is solvent already on the metal okay and then you put oil on top well the thing is is that those two uh, chemicals or those two um, liquids they're designed to basically counteract one another um, so you don't want to have metal that still has quite a bit of solvent on there and then you put oil on top it'll probably just start attacking the oil and you'll probably lose a bit of lubrication and you'll basically just be wasting money so I do emphasize the drying uh, quite a bit um, of the gun let me just get another one here that I can do with my hand and I can just get in there around the uh, around the upper receiver and just wherever you see solvent just uh, just wipe it away it doesn't have to be perfect but obviously the more detailed the better And again, while while we were off camera, um, we also started drying some of the uh, bolt carrier parts. So as you can see, these are all 
uh, pretty well dried. Again, I was using the same shop rag to take off some of the solvent and um, and basically dry it. So for the most part, these are are pretty much bone dry, um, and they're ready to be they're ready to be oiled. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. Lower receiver, uh, same thing. Uh, you know, it took a little bit of time, and I got the shop rag and uh, basically just dried everything to get as much of the solvent out as as possible so that should be relatively good to go again for the sake of the video it's it's nice and quick so feel free to take more time all right so now we'll get into the oiling which is just as important as the actual cleaning itself and i actually have my uh bore ram um, already set up with a wet patch okay and you can probably see this a little bit golden color and uh, again, we're using corrosion X. This stuff is very, very good for not only lubrication, but also for um, uh, corrosion protection. And we'll just run it down the barrel. I, I like to use like a spinning motion as it goes down the barrel. Um, some people say, you know, you shouldn't run the patch back down. Um, but the thing again is it's already been cleaned again with the patches that we did. Um, with the solvent, you know, drying process. And the patch should flow, you know, up and down the barrel uh, very, very easily, um, especially since all the carbon is, is gone and whatnot. Um, okay, so that, that should be enough passes. Just uh, what I like to do then is, again, this is pretty clean. Um, so what I like to do is actually I like to reapply some oil back onto the same uh, patch and again use the needle nose plier and be careful not to you know stick your metal uh, with a needle nose but then just you know kind of get it around in the chamber and you know lu lubricate the locking lugs and uh, the feed ramps and just basically get you know the oil all around there and uh, you know if you have time you can even use it as a mop to mop the upper receiver as well I'm not sure if you can I'm not sure if you can see that I mean it's basically I, I consider it like liquid gold so you don't really want to waste it you can use your finger as well if um, if you like and again the um, the needle nose plier is good for just manipulating it and and basically getting the oil all around okay so now we'll get on to the oiling of the actual bolt carrier group let me just tidy this up and the most important part to oil on the bolt carrier group is basically the the rails these are the parts that actually contact the metal and there's four rails so it's basically like on the one o'clock position the five o'clock position seven o'clock position ten o'clock position I guess you can say and I also like to lubricate I actually like to not even for the sake of lubrication but corrosion protection I, I like to lubricate basically every single part um, even on the insides um, however you can do this is however you wish um, some people like to you know lubricate just right. There's some people that don't lubricate enough and there's other people that like to lubricate too much. Um, I'm probably towards the more of the too much side. I believe that um, you know if you don't have enough then it could be a big you know it could be a problem. Um, so I, I like to kind of slightly over lubricate but not to the point where it's soaking. So just get your finger and just start running it all over. Make sure that the the rails that I to told you about um, have their their lube as well and basically just every single part of the bolt carrier group um, you know lubricate it and then just use your fingers get the rings okay you know get the face of the bolt carrier group and again just use your fingers get it all nice and lubed up set it aside um, the pin because of the way that it's designed it's pretty easy to just oil 
um, but because some carbon actually does actually deposit there, I'll put a little bit of the corrosion X around it. And basically just use your fingers to cover everything. Um, cam pin. There's a lot of uh, action that this thing sees. As you can see, there is some metal scoring, which will happen no matter no matter what kind of lube you have in there. So just surround the whole thing with, with a little bit of oil. Just using my fingers, as always, just to coat everything. Um, firing pin, or excuse me, the firing pin, retaining pin. Some people probably don't put any oil on it, but I, I will just for the sake of um, anti-corrosion. And um, bulk, uh, excuse me, the um, <clears throat> the charging handle actually does see quite a bit of um, of uh, friction um, up against the upper receiver. So just put a light coat, you know, around it as well. It usually scrapes on the outside walls. Again, just use your fingers. Again, this is a very expedited means of doing it. You don't have to follow this. Take all the time if you have it to, to really just, you know, baby your rifle and, and get it clean thoroughly, dried thoroughly, and oiled thoroughly. Um, okay, so now we'll work on the lower receiver. This is pretty simple. If it's already, if it's, if it's cocked back, put your thumb over it and pull the trigger and let it gently slide forward or else it's going to slam forward. Um, Again, this part doesn't see too much abuse, um, so basically all I do is I just oil the springs um, that do the trigger mechanisms, or that is the trigger mechanism. And so that should be fine. You could get the um, you could get the uh, the patch that I use to clean or to oil the um, barrel and actually mop the insides, but um, you know, I'll just leave it to verbally for you guys to consider. And these parts may not need metal, there's some, uh, excuse me, oil, there's, there's probably going to be some people that say, oh, you're, you're putting, you know, oil on, on things that don't necessarily need it, but you know, metal is metal. Uh, you know, corrosion doesn't care whether or not you put oil there, it's, it's always going to affect it as long as the conditions are right. So, you know, I, I do put oil, um, you know, on the hammer, you know, and whatnot. And um, basically that's it. So this is basically um, the lubrication section of this video, and then we'll just get to the uh, reassembly, and that'll conclude the video. Okay, everybody, so you already saw how we lubricated um, pretty much the barrel and and the upper receiver as well as the uh, bolt carrier group so now it's time for reassembly. The bolt carrier group is the most complex out of um, the whole process of reassembling the gun. So again all parts have been uh, lubricated. Uh, this is how the bolt carrier group faces forward and you want to install the um, basically the the bolt okay with the ejector which is this side facing to the right of the bolt carrier group and what that'll do is that hole will be on the top okay so because the shells out eject to the right that that's the ejector right there so make sure that's to the right so you slide it in and basically you try to line up the holes and okay because again that it, it actually moves back and forth and rotates so I think it's about lined up right there you get your cam pin and with the pin facing uh, basically in the same direction that the bolt carrier group, not not that way, but this way. Install it, and hopefully that'll go in right away. Okay, it did. That's excellent. Pull the bolt forward, okay, and then rotate the pin 90 degrees, so it's now facing left to right. Get your firing pin and bring it through the top. This might require a little bit of bring it through the top and just drop it in and it should find the hole and then it should just drop down so it did perfect now you turn it to the side now we're going to install the firing pin retaining pin because without this thing the firing pin will just fly back out so this thing basically holds 
holds it together. So squeeze it. It does. It doesn't really require any tools. But just squeeze it so it gets a little bit thinner, and then put it in through that hole, and then just snap it in. And uh, as you can see, that's how the bolt operates, and uh, you know the, the firing pin isn't coming out. Now um, we're going to do the reassembly process. Now what a lot of people get hung up on is when you put it in make sure that your cam pin is not off to the side because it won't fit through the physical space of the upper receiver on the back end so pull it forward so it's it's flush okay so what we'll do is we'll get the uh, charging handle and put it in first okay there's these little metal inserts okay where I'm not sure if you can see this but there's these um, see these metal tabs there's these there's a space for that in order for the thing to drop down so make sure you you line it up forward and then it'll the the charging handle will drop down so there it's already in we'll get the uh, bolt again with the with the bolt face uh, already pulled out put it on top and then the bolt will actually pull the charging handle with it and then what you want to hear is a snap at the end so it's in, okay. We get our lower receiver, which again uh, we've already, you know, lubricated and whatnot. And um, the the pins, the retaining pins, are actually lubed from the previous job, so I won't I won't necessarily um, oil them now. So basically, you just line up the front, and then line up the rear. I usually like to um, stand it up on its end like that, and then push down make sure that it's really snug with the upper receiver and lower receiver in contact and then when they're lined up the, the pin should just slide in very easily and that's how you know um, that it that it went in perfectly and uh, yeah so that's it so that's basically the the whole entire gun uh, oiled and lube and it goes back back and forth back and well safety check or function check and yeah, so that's it. All right, everybody, thanks for watching the video on how to clean and lubricate the AR-15. I uh, hope you found it very, very informative, and uh, I look forward to you guys supporting my next videos. Thanks for watching. Oh, shit. What the? Put the camera down. What the hell are you guys doing in my garage?